So in order to set up a website using PHP, we have to install what is called a local server. And there's a lot of different software out there on the internet that you can get in order to install a local server on your computer. I do know that some people are a little bit scared when it comes to installing a server on your computer. And I just want to point out that there's nothing to be scared of. Everything is going to be fine and you're not going to install any sort of viruses or anything. Setting up a server is something that is actually quite easy to do. And anyone that does websites do it quite frequently. So it's not something that new people should be scared of doing. It's something that takes a couple of minutes to do and then you have something running on your computer. So when it comes to installing a server, there's many different servers you can choose from. You have LAMP, VAMP, XAMP, LIMP, <laughs> there's many different kinds of servers. I did also hear about something called Docker from one of my subscribers in the last video. So it's just interesting to see that there's so many different ways to do it. What we're gonna use, however, is a server called XAMP. And the argument I have for using XAMP is that it's easy to set up and it's the one I've been using for many years. I'm just really comfortable using XAMP. So going inside your computer, you can see that we have this website here that I just found called apachefriends.org. I'll go ahead and leave a link to it so you can actually see it on screen here. Basically, this is just going to be a piece of software that you're gonna download that we're going to start and then it's going to run our server on our computer. This means that we can actually run a website that is using PHP on our computer without having to upload our website to the internet. So this makes it very easy to just work on our website offline on our computer, just like if you were to just make a HTML website. As you can see, we have a couple of different versions we can install in here. We have for Windows, Linux, and Mac. And you can also see what version we're going to install. In this case here, this is going to be release 8.2.0, which is the PHP version that we're going to run on this server here. So once you've figured out what operating system you're sitting on, I, I bet you probably know already, you're gonna go ahead and click the button for that one. So I'm gonna click Windows. Then it's going to install the program for you. And if it doesn't, you're just gonna go ahead and click up here where it says click here. Then we're gonna accept the privacy pop-up and then we're just gonna go ahead and download the latest version, which is 8.2.0. So we have the latest version of PHP here. So I'm gonna go ahead and download it. Now, once you have it downloaded, you're just gonna go ahead and double click it so we can make sure to install it on our computer. And it is important that you take note of where exactly you are installing it since we will have to go in and do a couple of changes to it. Now, if you do get a pop-up like this, don't worry too much about it since this is only going to be relevant if we were to install this inside our program files, inside our main drive. So with that, I'm just going to click OK. And then we're going to choose where we want to install this program. So we're gonna make sure all these are ticked on. And then I'm going to click Next. Then I'm going to select where I want to install this. Now, as you can see, I have it inside my C drive, but not inside my program file. So I can just go ahead and install it directly on the C drive. So I'm just gonna go and do that. Click Next. Then I'm going to choose a language. In this case, it's going to be English. And then we can just go ahead and make it set up our program on our computer. So it's just going to unpack and install. Now, if you do insist that you want to install this inside your program files, then I do have a link in the description where you can go in and actually make sure there's no warnings popping up when you try to run this program inside the program files. But like I said, if you just install it directly inside the C drive, like I did here, we're not gonna have any sort of issues. Now, once you have it installed, it's gonna ask if you want to start the control panel now or if you want to wait with later. For now, let's just go ahead and not do that because I do want to show where exactly this is installed so you can just open it up from inside your computer. So with that, I'm gonna click finish. And then you're gonna go into where you installed XAMP, which is inside, in my case, the C drive. So I'm gonna go into this PC inside my C drive. Then I'm gonna go down to the bottom here and then you can see I have XAMP. Inside the XAMP folder, we're gonna have the actual server files, which means that we can scroll down to the bottom and actually run this control panel that we were just asked about. So we can just go ahead and click the XAMP-control.exe, open it up, and then you can see we have a little software in here. Now, the important thing for you to know about in here is that we have two services that we need in order to actually get PHP working. One is going to be the Apache server, which is the one that we need in order to actually run PHP. And the second one is the MySQL server, which is used in order to get access to our database. So what I can do is I can start these two, and then you can see we have them running. Another tip that I have for you is to make sure that you go down and actually dock this at the bottom. Since this is the program, you're gonna to have to start every single time you need to start working on your website. This means that we need to go down and actually dock it or pin it to your taskbar so you have easy access to it next time. With this running, we now need to set up our website inside this server here, which is very easy to do. So we're gonna go back inside our folder where we have XAMP installed, and then you're gonna go up to the top here, and then you're gonna go inside the folder called htdocs. Now in here, you're gonna find a bunch of files and these are just mainly to welcome you into the XAMPP software. So if we were to go inside my browser here and inside the URL, I'm gonna type localhost. And then you can see we get this little website here. And this is basically what we see with these files inside the htdocs folder. This is basically what this is. 
So we don't really need to have this. So what I can do is I can go back inside our folder and then I can just go and delete all the files that we have in here. Now, the important thing for you to know about this folder here is that this is going to be the place where you start creating your websites every time you want to create a new website inside this server here. So what we can do is we can go and create a new root folder. So I'm going to right click and say I want to create a new folder. I can call this one my website just to give it some kind of name. Of course, you're more than welcome to call whatever you want it to be. But in my case, I'm just going to call it my website. And now what you're going to notice is that inside the browser, I can go back inside and type localhost. And then you can see we get a list of all the different websites that I have inside this folder here. This means that if I were to create a second website, go in here, create a second one, my second website. Then you can see if I were to refresh in here, we now have a new website that we can open up using this server here. So if I were to click my website, you can now see that we have this website open. So going inside your preferred editor, in my case, this is going to be Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go ahead and create my first file, which means that I'm going to save this file inside this folder that I just created. A very good advice for you is to go inside and actually dock the htdocs folder on the side over here so I have quick access to it. So what I can do is I can go ahead and go inside, find exam, take my htdocs folder and dock it over here on the side. So in this sort of way, I have quick access to it whenever I have to open my folders here. So I can click it, go in here. Let's just go ahead and delete that second website since we don't actually need it. I'm going to go inside my root folder and create a index.php. Now, this is the moment where some people are going to get confused if you came directly from my HTML course, because when it comes to PHP, we want to make sure that instead of creating HTML files, we create a PHP file. The main difference here is that we actually allow for PHP to be run inside these files here. You can still write HTML just like you can before. So you don't need to freak out about your website breaking or anything like that, or not being able to write HTML inside these files just because it's called .php. And the same thing goes if you have an existing website that you want to convert into a PHP website, you can just take all the different HTML files that you have and just change the extension from HTML to PHP on those, and it's going to work inside your server. And it's not going to break anything, by the way. I should say that because some people do worry that it is going to break something, so I have to say it. With this file here, I'm going to save it. And then you can see we have this front page here. So if I were to go back inside my website, I can refresh my website. And then you can see we get a completely blank page. And that's because right now we have the index file running inside our server. Now, depending on the editor you're using, because in some cases the editor is just going to work straight away. But if you are using Visual Studio Code, it may ask you something down here at the bottom. It says, cannot validate since a PHP installation could not be found. This is a very typical thing when you have a new version of Visual Studio Code. So if you have not set up PHP already inside this software, you are going to have to set it up manually inside this text editor here. So what you can do if you were quick enough is to make sure you opened up the little link it gave you. If not, then we're going to go up into file, go down to preferences, go inside your settings. Then you're going to click on extensions and then you're going to go down to PHP. And from in here, you can actually set it to where you want to have the executable path set up inside a JSON file. So we're to click this. You can now see that we have this one line called php.validate.executable path. And this is where we need to set in the link for our PHP installation, which is again inside the exam folder. So if we were to go back inside the exam folder, go back, you can see we have a folder in here called PHP. So I'm going to click it. And then you can see we have a php.exe file down here at the bottom. This is the one we need to link to inside this executable path inside Visual Studio Code. So what I can do is I can copy my path here, go back inside, paste it inside the double quotes, and then we're going to write backslash php.exe. Now, if you copied the path directly like I did here, you want to make sure that these are not backslashes, but instead forward slashes. Otherwise, you're going to get an error message. And once you did this, you're just going to go ahead and save the file and then you can close it down. And now we have it set up so that we can actually find the PHP version that we're using once we start creating a PHP website. So just to kind of test this out, let's go ahead and start up a regular HTML website. Now I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in for you so you can actually see what is going on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the body tags and create a pair of PHP tags, which we use in order to write PHP inside a website. So what I can do is I can write angle bracket, question mark, PHP, question mark, angle bracket. And then anything that goes in between here is going to be considered as PHP. So just to follow a very popular tradition here, let's go ahead and go inside and write echo, double quotes, hello world, close it off with a semicolon, 
save it, go inside our website, refresh it, and then you can see we get hello world. So with that, we now know that we have a server running so we can actually write PHP code inside our website and have it display inside the browser. And with that, in the next video, we're gonna talk a bit about PHP syntax so we can actually write PHP properly inside our website. So hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.